What secrets did the lost teaching of the apostles reveal that allowed 12 Jewish men, uneducated, to turn their world upside down? One more time, God, next on It's Supernatural! Hello, Sid Roth here with Dr. Jennifer and Dennis Clark. And as far as I'm concerned, their brand new book is one of the most significant game changers I have seen, uh, I think, ever. Jennifer, in 2016, uh, both of you had a God-given hunger to pursue God more than any other time in your life, uh, and you found yourself at a whole new level with God. Yes. Tell me about that. It started out with a sense of the darkness in the world today is so great that it's going to take a Book of Acts kind of Christian to be able to handle what needs to be done. So we were looking back at the early church with a hunger in our hearts to ourselves walk in what the early church walked in, but also as pastors to prepare a people who would be ready to walk in that. And so we really presented our lives as living sacrifices and, and God, whatever it takes. and. It felt at times like we were, like in the book of Genesis when it talked about the Spirit hovering over the face of the waters. We felt like we were in, in a Holy Spirit incubator oh. in the presence of God. And God began to take us back to some of the writings of John Wesley and the way he discipled that in one generation he changed an entire nation. And it was crying out to the Lord, do it again, Lord. We present ourselves, we lay ourselves on the altar to be used in this way. And yeah. Dennis had the experience, and a few days later, Dennis prayed for me, and I came into the experience after really knowing about it for 30 years. Then the next Sunday, we went to church. So it is impartable. It's impartable. And many people sovereignly came into the experience just listening to us teach about sure. it. Then we had an altar call, and it would just transformed our church and the level of hunger for God and the, I would say, um, passion for you, God. You know, I, I don't know about you, I want more hunger than I have. I'm hungry for more of God, but I want more than I have. I want more passion for God than I have. But it is a grace and it's impartable and that is what's exciting me so much. Well, then, uh, Jennifer, you bumped into the lost teachings of the apostle. It's called the Didache. Yes. Well, what does the word Didache mean? The Didache, Didache can mean teaching or training, but it implies more of a rigorous training, like an athlete um, preparing for competition would receive. Okay, the lost teaching. I mean, that was so, you know, 2,000-some years ago. Um, how do you know it was the apostles? that did it, and it wasn't just some monk that, uh, that signed their names. <laughs> well, in 1873, the first and only complete copy of the manuscript of the Didache was discovered by a Greek Orthodox cleric in a library in a monastery, and it's he found it in 1873, and then it began to be studied. But the scholars and historians who were studying it were just like a, a lone rangers. And in the year 2000, a coalition of historians and scholars was formed to bring all of it together and get a general consensus. I mean, the best in the world of the scholars who were studying the Didache came together, studied it intently for 11 years, and the consensus was that this was written before any of the Gospels, was written before any of the epistles, and that it was written by Jewish believers in the first century around or before 50 A.D. And in the Didache itself, it says, it gives its title, The Lord's Teaching Through the Twelve Apostles 
for the Gentiles. And so the Didache is aimed at giving these new Gentile believers a good foundation. And what this did, because eventually the Gentiles outnumbered the Jews in the early church, but these were men and women who walked in passion, purity, and power. They turned the world upside down. They, the halos we see in the paintings, the old paintings of them, this is because the glory of God rested upon them and was visible upon their countenances. And no wonder John Wesley looked back to the early church as the gold standard for Christianity. And I don't know about you, and I don't know about those of you who are watching, but I want a Book of Acts church. Why would, I can see it, mm -hmm. a need for the new believers right. that come in. But by the way, I think history's repeating itself. Yes. These new believers are at the same level these, these young people and even older people that are going to come into the kingdom, they're at the same level as the early pagans, even the Jewish people. I mean, the Jews and the Gentiles, there's such darkness on society today. I happen to believe, just as Esther said, you've been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. This revelation of the lost teachings of the apostle was called to the kingdom for such a time as this, because there is going to be a billion soul harvest. And even those that are mature believers, just briefly, Dennis, why is this important for someone that's been a believer forever? To, to, to master. Yeah. Well, primarily what we saw, we've always been disciplers. We've always been a how-to people because we saw a weakness. Even those coming out of Bible schools and what have you, we saw a weakness in, in their foundation as far as uh, uh, knowing uh, basic foundational holy living. And we saw them come to the place where we had to almost go backwards and say, you know what, the, we, we've got cracks in the foundation. And I gave them examples, even out of the Didache, to my church. And I found out that seasoned believers, 30, 40 years in the faith, all of a sudden were getting convicted by lesson one in the Didache. <laughs> L listen, how would you like to sit under the teaching of the first apostles? I have a question for you. What did John Wesley know that Billy Graham did not? Wesley's revelation changed an entire nation, the nation of England. Right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. something very clear to you. Billy Graham is the gold standard of evangelists. It's but not Jennifer, what did he say in his book? He said that he regretted that so many of the people he led to the Lord became were converts and not true disciples. The Didache is an extension of the Great Commission because Jesus himself said, go into all the world and make disciples. And the Hebrew word for disciple there is a Talmudim. That is, a, those are disciples of a rabbi. And just like the original disciples that Jesus walked with in his earth walk, they studied with him, they ate with him, they, they listened to instruction from him. Their aim was to become the kind of man their rabbi, their master was. And it's not an instant thing. It's, it's like 
absorbing. It's like becoming totally transformed. And this is what the, the Didache produced, disciples who looked like they'd been with Jesus. It's, I, I have to tell you, I've sat under this teaching. It is so rich if you're a pagan that has just come to the Lord or a seasoned believer. There is a richness in this, like it's anything beyond the Bible. There's nothing as rich as is this. Jennifer, how did one man change the entire nation of England? How did John Wesley do this? John Wesley had a vision for the early church. He believed it could be replicated in England. And so he looked back to as much as was available at that time, um, to what did the early church fathers say? What did the apostles say? And he made disciples. He looked to the Moravians that were his predecessors and his mentors in a way. And they had small groups where believers met together opened their hearts to become fully known and fully loved. See, when we move into God's glory, and God's going to have a great company of glory carriers in these end times, when we move into God's glory, that glory contains light that illuminates. And we see our failings in the light of His glory. And He doesn't casually dispense his glory on believers. We need to pursue Him. He's looking for radical people who really want, who are really seeking Him. And if we're really seeking God in His presence, we have an obligation to deal with our own hearts to move closer to Him. And that, that er eradicated a whole lot of problems, and they, they flourished. Now, I noticed that you're raising up leaders that have not even been leaders mm -hmm. before, and the, 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 the presence of God is even... Uh, tell me about that young girl that's running one, one of the yeah. groups. We have uh, one young girl, one, she, we prayed for the, the replaced life. We prayed for an impartation. And by the Galatians. way, she's going to pray for you yes. in the next second. Because this, this is our, one of our favorite things to do. Galatians 2.20, here, here's the way the Lord revealed it to me, and this is what I want to be an experience for people out there. You need this. Galatians 2.20 says, it's no longer I that live, it is no longer I who love, it is no longer I who forgive. It is no longer I who work, for it is God who is at work in us. But that transformation is going to take you from a place, no matter how much you love God and where you're at and how much Bible knowledge you know, God is going to take you from a place of me to a we. An inseparable union and communion that has a, a, an awareness. Now, it can be instant, and we can impart this, but then you're going to enjoy walking out step by step that relationship. God's going to bring you into a whole new relationship of oneness. That Galatians 2.20, I've read that for years, but I'm telling you, when you experience it, it's a whole different ballgame. Something just happened. The glory of God just descended in this studio on what Dennis was just saying. When he prays for you, when we come back, I believe that same glory is going to settle on you. Would you like to hear some of these more life-changing nuggets from the Didache, the lost teachings of the apostles? Next. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Turn to It's Supernatural. You know, I've been thinking about this. How is any church going to handle all the young people having no orientation to Christianity, no orientation to morality, when they come in droves to their church? How are you two going to handle it when they come to your church? Well, you see, we look at ourselves as coaches, and a coach equips the team to play the game. The people who are leading our small groups are actually becoming leaders in their own right who will be equipped to handle whoever God brings in. Dennis, 
the two of you are known for a way to hear God, a way to get in touch with your spirit. Uh, uh, but you say that this system you've developed that the Holy Spirit taught you right. is necessary to implement the teaching yes. of the Didache, the yes. lost teachings of the apostle. Could you briefly explain yeah. what drop down is and why it's so important and, and demonstrate it? Yeah. We've, we've been called how to people, and we've had seasoned pastors even say, here's a couple telling us how to do what we already knew we were supposed to do biblically. And so we said, what the church needed for proper discipleship, to even usher them into the, into the Didache and the original teachings, they need some simple how-tos. And one of the most uh, important that I feel is head Christianity versus heart Christianity. So we had to find a simple tool, if you want to call it that, but it's a resource of l training people to function from the spirit Most instead of their head. Most people, when they say, where is your spirit, they go, like the Pledge of Allegiance of their heart. But that's not what Jesus said. No, no. He said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And we, we kind of coined the term drop down. And, uh, there's always going to be someone say, where's that in Scripture? <laughs> well, in our New Testament, anytime you see the word put on, means it's, it comes from a Greek word in duo, which means to sink into in order to be clothed. So if the peace of God is down here in my heart, that it rises right. up to guard my heart and my mind. Put on the Lord Jesus. Put on the, put on, how about this one? Put on bowels of mercy. Ask the average Christian, how do you do that? They, See, they can quote the scripture, but they're like, how do you do that? You want to put on the bowels of mercy, you go to Him. You draw nigh, and we would say, Jesus in you, your Messiah in you, the hope of glory. Where's Jesus? Now, we just said in you, they point to heaven. So I said, there's a disconnect here that we're going to have to train people to go to Jesus within as opposed to Jesus far away in heaven. Yes, He's in both places, so are we. But the reality is we're on earth. We're supposed to be demonstrating the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. This is our assignment. And we're using that word assignment. <laughs> okay. You guys do a brilliant job in your brand new book to teach you how to live, how literally live in your spirit all the time. It's the most wonderful thing in the world. But demonstrate very briefly how someone would drop down to their spirit well, with Jennifer. Jennifer was totally intellectual, and she would struggle. And I says, Jennifer, just put your hand down here, because discerning the human spirit was easy for me from the time I got saved. And I think everything I learned, it was out of discerning my own spirit and then others. And, and I say, close your eyes, and I could bear Walk witness. Walk me through it just like that. The when you were okay. first discipling me. Tell All me right. what to do. Jennifer, put your hand down here. What else do I need to do? I want you to pay attention to what's down here. I'm going to do that too right yeah. now. Go ahead. Do, close your eyes. Close your eyes. <laughs> By the way, this is, this is a good one for pastors. If a person struggles with the assurance of their salvation, do exactly what I'm doing to Jennifer. The assurance of their, I think I'm saved, I said the prayer. Okay, right while your hand is down there, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon me that I should be called a child of God. Did that feel good or bad? If it feels bad, we're going to have you receive Jesus. If that felt good, that is a inner witness or your spirit bore witness with His Spirit that you are a child of God. There is, and God won't play charismatic Pentecostal games here. If He puts peace on it, that means there was a supernatural transaction. That's the best way to explain it. When any issue in your life, you take it to the Jesus within, and it changes to peace, the shalom, harmony. You know what's so amazing? This takes care of so many problems, pastors won't have to counsel you. <laughs> All the emotional garbage you've had of a lifetime, you can have Jesus get rid of it in, in literally seconds. But you really need to read the book to get the appreciation, although it's extremely simple. 
Give me one, one, of, the, uh, one of your favorite nuggets that you learned from the Didache, and it's just loaded with these yeah. nuggets this is from like the original apostles. Lesson one. I, I couldn't get past lesson one without being totally intrigued. It was to love the Lord with all of your heart. And with the Gentiles, they would say, not the God that brought you out of Egypt, they would say the God who made you, that eliminates all those other gods. And, and they would say, uh, love Him with all your heart and, and love your enemies. Bless them. Fast and pray for those who persecute you. And I don't think I had a pastor in my church that ever fasted for an enemy or someone no, who was you persecuting didn't have them. You too many that were fasting for a friend. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Let me exactly. tell you something. The face of Christianity is about ready to have a facelift. <laughs> and I say, so be it. Well, I want Dennis to share just a couple more nuggets. No time. I want him the most important thing. Pray that impartation that is transferable, uh, that will allow you to operate in the greater glory. And so we're going to do a bonus extended segment, and I'll see you right back. Call now and get Drs. Dennis and Jen Clark's brand new book, An Ancient Blueprint for the Supernatural, and their four-part audio CD teaching set, The Lost Teaching of the Apostles, plus their digital booklet, Small Groups That Work. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9691. You will receive Drs. Dennis and Jen Clark's brand new book, An Ancient Blueprint for the Supernatural. Lost for centuries, it is known as the Didache, or the teaching. This ancient text is the believer's key to unlocking the supernatural lifestyle of first century believers who operated in signs, wonders, and miracles. Discover how to live as a holy vessel in a godless society. Enter a new way of lifestyle that reveals the real Jesus to the world. Access the miraculous lifestyle that Jesus made possible through the cross. Experience the presence and power of God through ancient practices such as persistent prayer, communion, baptism, and more. Gain wisdom for discerning false teaching and doctrine that obscures the fullness of God's life and power. Uncover the biblical definition of the one new man and what it means for you. Learn to live in watchful preparation for the Messiah's return. Unleash the timeless wisdom of the Didache in your life and begin walking in the world-changing footsteps of the early church. Plus, you will receive their four-part audio CD teaching set, The Lost Teaching of the Apostles. In this powerful teaching, the Clarks unfold the Didache in a deep and more profound way than what was even written in the original manuscript. Plus, you will receive the Clark's digital booklet, Small Groups That Work. John Wesley was an English cleric, theologian, and evangelist who was the leader of the greatest revival in history in Great Britain. The Clarks reveal John Wesley's secrets that helped transform his entire nation. Don't miss out on getting Drs. Dennis and Jen Clark's brand new book, An Ancient Blueprint for the Supernatural, and their four-part audio CD teaching set, The Lost Teaching of the Apostles, plus their digital booklet, Small Groups That Work. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9691. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9691 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. You know what? I, one of the things I love about your new book and, and the new CDs that you're doing uh, to, to introduce it to people is in the Didache, they don't have to go out and buy one. It's actually the original Didache in English is in your book. Yes, yes. They, they can, they can uh, look at the, uh, we believe these early believers, early Gentile believers, memorized it as an outline, but then were mentored and instructed into the meanings of the outline. Right. And that's what the two of you have been yeah. doing. Yes. Uh, and that's what you're going to be doing. It's like the richest Bible study you could possibly have at this moment in your life for the transition the world is going through. We're living in a new time, uh, and things will not be like they've always been. But this will prepare you for the new outpouring of God's glory. 
give me one more good nugget from the Didache. Oh, actually, the one that, that uh, really affected my entire church in the small group setting was that fences, I ne never heard of that term before, but a fence was that because we were in accountable groups is to, you know, adultery and murder, they don't just fall out of the sky. They came because the little foxes, the little issues that you did not deal with grow and they get bigger. And they started saying, gee, if, if I dealt with, actually, you know, they even said tithing. Oh, that might not be the best subject, but tithing was a fence against greed. And, oh. and they felt like if you deal with it at that it's level. It's protective. It's protective. Fences are there for your benefit. It's not legalism. It's not constraint. It's not confinement. It's there. It actually gives you the liberty. You, you know what that sounds to me like? We have the false meaning of grace, the false grace teaching, uh, where repentance is a dirty word. Right. But this reminds me of, of of being able to supernaturally surround yourself with the protection of God. And in this day and age that we're living in, wow, I'm walking in this glory because <laughs> I have a fence That's all right. around me. That's what That's I'm hearing exactly you say. And, and our people have learned that grace uh, is empowerment, not just the f we're saved by grace, it's a free gift. The bulk of the church still sees free, unmerited favor, which is true. But what we taught them was that this grace is the heavenly currency that leads you into God's ability to walk in that supernatural realm. Grace is the currency that gives you access to God's ability to walk in the supernatural. And things when they sound in the Didache, if they start to sound too hard, too difficult, you're missing you're missing the grace. You're missing the currency that's been made available to you to access. That's the true grace. That's the true yes. grace, empowerment. Okay, you have prayed for just about every member in your church. It can be laying on a hands. It can be just verbal. It's transferable. Once a, a human that has been born from above, born again, once that person has touched a truth, they can impart it. I want you two to impart the truth of living the replaced life. Explain what that is for a moment. Though. Well, again, it was uh, a recognition that we are one spirit with him. Now, you can know that theologically, but I'm talking about an experience to where your consciousness in your everyday walk about, go to work life, your consciousness is a we, Jesus and I together. We don't think something happening to me. There, there's somehow a supernatural death to me. It's happening to us, God and I, and I can do all things through him. And it really is, if, if, a, if a person wants to look at it in the simplest form, we, we only quote, it is no longer I who live. But God really opened that up and said, that suggests it is no longer I who love, because we love because what? He first loved us. Everything has to be done out of that new creation reality. Everything has to be out of that spirit that is joined together with him. It's a we. It's a me and Jesus joined together. And we saw people struggle. Makes life a lot easier. Yeah, right. They struggle with love. They struggle with forgiveness. And they, because they're doing it from their head, sincerely. But if you're, if you're not doing it from the heart, it's not going to work because the grace isn't available. I mean, the grace is available, but you're not accessing it. You don't access through the brain. No. No. And Jesus is the only one who can live the Christian life. So that's the, that's the rest to come into. We rest in Him and yield to Him. And He's the, he's the sin overcomer. He's the lover. He's the, uh, the power. Everything that, that we need is Him. That must be how the first church operates. Yes, yes. We can't live the Christian life in self-effort. Okay, I, I need you to, when you pray, to pray the prayer in such a way, if someone was never even born again, they get okay, born we could again, do that. if you do that. I can do that. The, 
way to start out is if you were, you knew nothing, you were brand new, we would pray a sinner's prayer. This is a selfers prayer. This is the easiest way to communicate it. Lord Jesus, maybe I've been a believer for a short while. I don't know that much, but I know that there's something more. Let me repeat more. that after you. You say it and I'll repeat it after okay. you, okay? I want you to pray after me that I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But now I repent. I'm receiving forgiveness for trying, knowingly or unknowingly, trying to live the Christian life in my own strength. I now repent. I have been trying to, to live, live the, the Christian, Christian life in, in my own, own strength. strength. I repent over that. So now I receive that it is no longer I who I, live. I receive that it's no longer I who live. And you may have known that scripture. You may be a new believer. You may be one that's been around a long time, but it's impartable, and I can feel the presence of God on it right now. You can enter into it instantly by receiving. Now, when you receive, you need to know that you receive from down here. It's not an intellectual situation. We have a little thing that makes this real simple. C, capital C, capital Y, capital O. Memorize that. That's not hard. Consent, yield, and obey. And I receive Galatians 2.20, that it's no longer I that live. And from this time forward... I receive Galatians 2.20, that it is no longer I who live. I've consented to that. I've, I've consented yielded to, to that. that. I've yielded to that. And by faith, I'm going to walk that out. And by faith, I'm going to walk that out. It's an instant entry, but it's a progressive walking out that's beautiful. It's fun. When this first happened to me, I was driving down the street. And Boy, the presence of God is here yeah. to, yeah. It, to, 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 uh, to make substance to your words yeah. in everyone that's praying. So we want to pray that, you've read this in the scriptures in most cases, write that on the tablet of my heart. Write that on the, the tablet, tablet of, of my heart. heart. That means I own it. I don't know it, I own it. That means I own it. I don't Just know, it. know it. I own it. <laughs> and actually, it's happening right now all over. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know about you, but that impartation is settling in me right now. It's, it's not a classic way. It's the no. glory that's doing it. Yes. It's not anyone laying hands on you. It's God coming over you. That's what's oh. going on. Oh. That's, that's the presence of God. And you know, you're never going to be the same. The creator of the universe, if you have asked him to forgive you of your sins, not just, not just one sin, let's repeat after me. Dear Lord, forgive me for all of my sins. I believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And he is seated inside of me, and I am seated inside of him in heaven. Jesus, because you have forgiven me of all of my sins, I have a new beginning. And I boldly proclaim, you are my Savior. I boldly proclaim, you are my Lord. Amen.